Well, this meal was fancy when I had it ready, but it's not that great right now. So, oh, it looks fancy too. Uh, live and let die got top of the stack against the man with the golden gun reunion. And honestly, T.S. Eliot's collected poems. So you put that right at the bottom. I did put it at the bottom. Oh, you T.S. Eliot fans. There are not many anymore. He's, he's considered a modernist and that's pretty well evil, I think, nowadays. And the reason that I put it in this order was um, like I had a hard time deciding because watching Reunion just the once, this was a really excellent movie. Um, this one was from New Zealand and I mean they wouldn't have had all the money that these guys had making a movie but uh, it's very interesting and so for watching these movies if you're just gonna watch them once well this is this is more interesting actually I mean these are cheesy these 007 things they really are the acting is not very good but and the stories are silly but the comedy though on the part of exactly the former There's Saint some, some Roger Moore is quite good yeah it's just he's not a great actor it's a bit like the guy who played Jack Tripper on uh, Three's Company and the thing is, is when I watch these, I think, okay, well, I could watch these again and again. Whereas this one, once you know what's going to happen in the story, I don't know that it, that it'd be as interesting. So that's why that didn't make it to the top of the stack. Now, um, why T.S. Eliot's collected poems made it to the bottom is because um, like I look at things along the same lines. How many times am I going to want to go back to the poems? Two of them I'll want to go back to again and again. That's just two. And so I, I don't know. I don't really know how to rate it as a whole set. I don't want to go back to it all. Yeah, it's uh, his dis career described generally a long and steep decline, declining curve descending mm -hmm. curve and so the two poems I'm sure Pauline's talking about were in his first volume of published poetry 1917 and he died I believe 1965 so it was almost like a half a century decline it's uh, I don't know if I've ever seen anything happen that precipitously with any sort of writer but uh, the two poems that I mentioned they are really great and as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to art, an artist really only has to pull off something great once, and and that makes it all worthwhile. So a poem, poem had better be somewhat lengthy, and the two poems she's talking about are the not the Wasteland, but the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock and Portrait of a Lady. Wasteland is, yeah. uh, well, frankly, a bit of a wasteland when it comes to uh, being a complete work. And, I mean, when we were going through this, once we we got through some really awful stuff, we were going back and forth, we were reading back and forth. And some of the things, when there's multiple characters, well, we were doing different characters. And so that was kind of fun. Rock, but, um, so we might read through some plays that way again, or somebody else's, whatever. Hmm. But not, not Elliot's. Um, Alice's plays do not come recommended. So, anyway, uh, once we got to a certain point, then um, it started to pick up again. But still, it... It's around World War II, close to the last things that he put out. So, I believe the first of the four quartets when it came out in 1936, and then the last little getting was sometime, I think, fairly early in World War II. So. And honestly... I think each of them ended up getting better and better, if I remember correctly. Of the four quartets, yeah. roughly. <laughs> I think I think they, you know, one, the second one was better than the first. And Way the better was, than the first, yeah. So, yeah, the first wasn't that good. Uh, but anyway, so that that was worth reading. I don't know if it's worth reading again. So whereas the way too much philosophy in all of it, really. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily call it. Uh, fantastic philosophy. I, he uh, was exposed to a lot of uh, philosophers. So, 
even major ones like Bertrand Russell. Now, really, I had a, um, a tough time deciding which to put on uh, the top and which underneath because th they're both very entertaining. And uh, I, I like, there was one scene in this where he drives over a bridge and the car flips and it, it was really great. So that was a, an awesome stunt and I don't know, the, the story in this one might have been more well crafted actually than this. I, I, half the time I'm looking at this going, what in the world, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, what I found interesting is that when I was um, watching the great course about writing fiction, he'd mentioned Bond and he'd obviously mentioned this movie and um, that this was the one that he was talking about. He got uh, some things wrong about it. It wasn't the cuff link that spun and cut through the ropes. No, it was uh, his watch. The watch was the, the fancy gadget in this one. And uh, anyway, so there were some things that um, the instructor James Scott Bell hadn't remembered quite uh, right, but that's okay. I'm sure he'll watch it again because it's worth watching again. It's and, entertaining. Uh, maybe I'll come up with a second edition of his lecture. <laughs> but, with correction. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, what made me decide to put this one above this one, even though the story seemed to be better crafted in here, and um, most of the actors were better in this one than in this one. What year was it? Well, these were put out um, right back to back. Like this, this one came after this one. Okay. But um, all right, 60, That's 70, 73, three, 73 and 74. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So I don't know if I ever saw the Man with the Golden Gun. I definitely saw this. Yeah, well... I think it was down in the New Orleans area, wasn't it? Something like that? Yeah. Um, it, but what made me put this one ahead, of, or on top of this one, is the Bond babe in this one wasn't a bad actress. Whereas Who this one, Jane Seymour or something? she was just a Bond bimbo in this one. Yeah, that's Jane Seymour. So, that's what did it for Who me. Is this one? It was the it was the Bond babe versus the Bond oh, bimbo. I'm afraid that's Brit Ackman. Well, she Let's did not see. do well. <laughs> so, <laughs> whoever Hervé she is, Gilles, she Gilles says, uh, the little was fellow quite disappointing. In, uh, She's the, lovely. The plane, the plane. Yeah, he was, he was in, in that. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't say who got. Well. I mean, each of these... Oh, yeah, it is Britt Beckland. So, she was married to Rod Stewart for a while. Yeah, well... Of course, he... I think he didn't like her that much but... because she wasn't that tall, maybe. Mm -hmm. He liked tall blondes. Mm -hmm. Very blonde. So, how's your pumpkin mac and cheese? It's awesome. Great. I'm telling you. So, it's a baked mac and cheese, and I didn't have flour left to make the white sauce, and I was like, what am I going to do? I would wanted to make this, and I'm out of flour. Well, I ground up some oats into flour, and it's perfectly good. It's a little bit <laughs> uh, grainier than typical flour, white sauce. but it's probably a whole lot healthier, right? Well, would I'm, these be like whole oats or something like that? Yeah, come highly recommended. I am thinking it worked out pretty well. I was yeah. pretty happy with it. One thing I'll say: um, it's easier to make than a white sauce, but well, you have to, know. <laughs> and it would be healthier, right? If you're getting but, whole oats, yeah. So. What I had to do is I heated it up and I had to wait. You know how you have to wait a little while for the oats to uh, plump up. up or whatever in the... In the oat? Well, you had to wait. So that's what I... Because um, at first I was like, this seems pretty runny. I don't know if this is going to work. But then in a couple minutes it thickened right up. It's so, a nice consistency. Yeah. I think so. Well. so that... that I was pretty happy with how that turned out. Yeah. And then I um, I mixed it all together and I I greased the casserole and uh, or the you know the the bread pan. Or whatever. 
and then I put the um, stuff in and I put cheese on top and first I had it covered with foil and then I took it off and melted the cheese and it was just perfect and I, w I was like oh but is James gonna come and no <laughs> so now it's all hard on top but it's no like, it's great mm. so and believe it or not it's still warm inside good like if I'd come here like an hour ago or whenever it would I would have been, have been scorching my tongue yeah you would have had to eat the broccoli yeah, who knows how <laughs> cool that would be. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, um, if you're making baked mac and cheese, it's um, really easy. It tastes way better than the boxed mac and cheese, and it's really not much. I kind of wish difficult. you hadn't mentioned that. I'm trying. I'm thinking of the craft special. Yeah. This is a what do they call it? A counter ad or something like that for craft. Yeah. Yeah, baked mac and think cheese is way better. Yeah. It's just, um, and all of the, I, I've been shopping at Shoppers Drug Mart to get the stuff on clearance. So, the I used um, the coffee cream, so that's 18% milk fat, I think, and, um, and the cheese was on on clearance too. So. I, and so was the pasta. This was a dollar nineteen a package. So really, I don't know how much more expensive it is to make this rather than the boxed stuff, which is terrible. So what sort of pasta did you say it was? Penne? Is that? Yeah, it's whole grain penne. There we go. I'm trying to learn those things. I'm, I'm, I was always fascinated when yeah. I was a kid. Of course, I never saw the variety that there is in the stores nowadays. You know, so, it was like spaghetti and lasagna, maybe. Mm. Then I heard about all these other ones. Oh, yeah. You, can, you don't have to use macaroni. You could mm -hmm. use whatever yeah. kind of pasta you want. You could even... Um, I mean, there are people out there that don't want to eat wheat, but they eat oats. This works. And so you can decide, oh, well, I don't want to go with the uh, whole grains or whatever, any kind of wheat pasta. I'm going to go with shirataki pasta or something else instead. So you could do that. And I think any child would want to eat this rather than the box stuff. Because it's. Delicious. I don't know how they feel about oats and the graininess, but. Uh, yeah. Like, I love it, but I've been eating whole wheat bread for oh, true. 50 yeah. years. Yeah, mm -hmm. so maybe they'd... You could grind your oats even finer, I okay. suppose, into more of the powder. Or, Just um, a word of warning. Yeah. Because I didn't used to like whole wheat whole bread. Whole wheat bread, that's right. So you might have to just make a like regular white bread. sauce. It might work better. When I moved out of my own, mm -hmm. out on my own, 1974. I decided I'd better take my nutrition in hand. Mm. I think this makes it better. I got better at that one. Well, maybe I'll try a different one tomorrow and see if if you like like a, the sauce made a different way. So I don't have to use oat. I can try to use something else. Anyway. It'd be interesting to try. Uh, well, it would work just the same as regular flour. Okay. So that you could make a white sauce that's not really white, it's <laughs> with rye flour. Um, and that would work out. But I don't have that right now. So um, so I won't be using that tomorrow either. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like you could hide whatever sort of vegetable in it. When you're making the baked stuff, it's it really kind of like it this nicely. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still having mixed in. Yeah. But uh, it might be good to chop it up. Mm -hmm. Well, you have the pumpkin mixed in. True. Yeah. But it's very different. But it's different. The pumpkin's basically a fruit, isn't it? Yeah. How's it's it pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anyway, I guess you probably want to talk about your books again. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You have 14 minutes. Okay. Enjoy. The time. You bet. I don't know if folks at home will enjoy it. <laughs> I really don't care that much.
What I'm going to talk about first is, I talked about the American election, and I was uh, scolding, and scolding is, the scolding I did was really mild. Scolding the American electorate for voting Donald Trump in. I was here recently with a slant, a, a slant light, a landslide. That's even more shame. We didn't even have to cheat this time. First election in the 21st century that the Republicans haven't had to cheat their way into power. Bush baby, it's W, got in twice cheating. First time I gather it was, well, the second time would have been worse, where he cheated his way into power via Ohio. And uh, of course, uh, Trump baby uh, cheated his way with the substantial help of the Russians in 2016 and of course they were all set to uh, have to do that this time around as it works out the democrats ran a really weak candidate now i know someone who after kamala harris was uh, kind of like Crown, yeah, Democrat, no money. Someone said, oh, there's no way the Americans will vote for a African-American woman. And then, well, they voted in Obama, not once, but twice. They voted in Hillary Clinton only to have the election stolen from her. Of course, uh, the person who was saying this uh, back then, saying that uh, they'd never vote for a woman, American electorate. Uh, he was saying way back in 2016, and he'd been saying it ever since for years now, Hillary Clinton didn't get elected, but she got the majority of votes, and the Republicans had to uh, cheat with the substantial help, as I was saying, of the Russians in 2016. We actually don't know how many votes, for example, were actually just stolen. Anyway, now it's time to talk turkey. With you folks hanging way out in the left wing in the United States, and elsewhere in the world, I'm getting sick and tired of it. You know, like, uh, people around the world or at least in the democracies, don't give a flying, I'm going to say F-L-O-C-K, they don't give a flying flock what you guys think, care, or whatever. They don't like your policies, they don't like uh, the way you carry out your policies. It doesn't appeal to them. Don't go around pretending that you give a flying, again, flock for working people. what you care about outside of your own ivory towers because you tend to be academics is uh, what you call people of color you're racist you're like uh, that scumbug Marxist really he's a commie uh, what was his name not Lukacs Marcuse I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly I don't think he deserves or deserved to have his name pronounced correctly. Yeah. Gave up, I believe it was even earlier than the 60s, but at least by the 60s, on um, the working class, saying they're not revolutionary enough. They've given up on the revolution. So we're going to turn to people of color all around the world, and we're going to turn even to the lumpen proletariat. Uh, he's turning Marx on his head when it came to uh, that Marx. Understood. And that's one of the few things he did understand correctly. That the lumpen proletariat, and he gave one time at least uh, uh, an exhaust, uh, not an exhaustive list, but an exhausting list of what he classes a uh, lumpen proletariat. 
and that's uh, pim pimps, thieves, prostitutes, uh, drug addicts. Um, he actually included literati in there, which would include himself. And uh, there were quite a few other things, but uh, you kind of get the drift. And uh, Marcuse believed that uh, they were more revolutionary than uh, the, the actual working class. These working class in democratic societies. I have no truck with that kind of thought. I have no truck with uh, Marcuse, and I have no truck with anyone who follows that line of thought. If uh, the left wing has given up on on uh, representing the working class, I, as a union guy, all throughout my working career, all throughout, give up on the left wing. You guys decide. I think you've decided already, except you're going around faking having Bernie Sanders, the Russian agent, the other Russian agent. Donald Trump's the one the Russians want elected, but Bernie Sanders, they wanted to get nominated so he could get really pounded by Donald Trump back in 2016 and again 2020. Bernie Sanders does not represent me or fellow working class people. It doesn't matter if he, if he wears uh, a shirt unbuttoned at the collar and rolls up his shirt sleeves. I don't know if he ever really worked a, a real working job ever in his life. Someone says he was a dog catcher or something. Maybe that qualifies, I don't know. Somehow or another he's turned up to be a millionaire with, uh, I saw a report, could be false, I don't know, could be fake news, that he had three homes back in maybe 2019 or something like that. How did he get that? You know, like mayor of Burlington, was it? And then he became a senator, you know, who knows how much money was being slipped to him by uh, various nefarious entities. Well, he was a senator in the form of bribes and so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, so uh, I've started giving a outline of what happened to the left wing in the United States in the 20th century. It's even before I was born. I was born a long time ago, so a little over 70 years ago. A little over two generations. Generation, most people figure it's about 30 years. Two generations, 60 years. So uh, there was a scumbug who was a vice president for uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. His name was Wallace, it wasn't George Wallace. But he decided to run against the Democratic Party. Well, in the United States, with their two-party system, if you uh, form a third party, and let's say you're on the right wing, well, you know, the other the main party and the right wing's just got to be annoyed at you. The way they got to have been annoyed with Ross Perot back in 1992. They're on the left wing and you run independently against the Democrats in the United States. The Democrats have a legitimate beef with you. I'm thinking of Ralph Nader in 2000 and 2004. He helped cost the Democrats and frankly uh, working class people, middle class people in the United States uh, it's stunning. It's eight years because he made it close enough for uh, the uh, the Republicans in those two election years to cheat and get away with it. So there was Wallace, and uh, then uh, you know the lefties wanted Adlai Stevenson. Adlai Stevenson. I'm not sure how to pronounce his first name. He's such a non-entity. They actually ran him twice. And he got his hindquarters handed to him. Frankly, not handed to him, shoved down his throat. And uh, that was two elections, 52 and 56. And what happened? Eisenhower, in the eight years that he ruled over America in his inimitable fashion, I don't know if he actually did a lot of snoozing, but he did a lot of golfing. And then more golfing and more golfing after that. Now, in the eight years he was in power in the Catsburg seat, on the throne, uh, they had three recessions. You don't believe me? Check it out. A lot of Republicans don't believe me. A lot of people on the right wing don't believe me, but he had three recessions. It's kind of hard to do that. 
The United States, I think, has had, as I don't know what happened to Biden's during his administration, but in my, a little bit longer, actually, than my lifetime, they've only had something like 11 recessions. And Eisenhower, three in eight years. Wow. I mean, it's supposed to be a lot of left wingers going to say, man, he's the, he was a pretty good guy. He's better than John Kennedy and, and better than Bill Clinton and, 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 and. You know. When you run the economy into the ground, you are hurting working people. You are hurting working class people and you're hurting the lower middle class. When you run, because they get unemployed and they don't have money saved up to live on. When you let the economy go in the toilet, and it's been the Republicans uh, all but one time in my lifetime, even going back to 1947, with the possible exception of Joe Biden, when you let the economy run in the toilet, you are an enemy of the working class and the middle class. And that's every Republican in my lifetime, with the exception of uh, Jerry Ford, who was only in for roughly two years, mm. has been an enemy of the working class. The uh, the one enemy of the working class uh, that was a Democrat was a big favorite of the lefties, Jimmy Carter. How do you do that? You know, like if you actually run the economy like you actually care about working class and middle class people, the economy doesn't go in the toilet unless you you're, uh, you end up with a plague that uh, Biden inherited from his predecessor. But there, Jimmy Carter did it. It was only for half a year, two uh, consecutive, what the eco economists call quarters, two uh, quarters of a year, one half of a year. But still, absolute, Jimmy, you're, you're ghost. You should be rolling over in your grave with shame. Absolutely shameful. How much time? A minute? Well, time to review this, I think. So this is a red velvet cake cup. And if you, you don't want to look too closely at the <laughs> ingredients or this um, fat content here, the saturated plus trans. Wow, that's a lot. 86. This, um, this red velvet cake cup so far has had the most out of the saturated fat. And I'm just going to have one bite. Pretty good? It's good, but I honestly, it's not my favorite one so far. Are you giving it to me then? Yes. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we, um, I noticed when I was cleaning up garbage in the alley that was there was so much garbage blown around. I don't know what um, happened. Did someone let uh, one of the bins up uh, when get over? I don't know what happened. Uh, but wine? there's more Shameful. garbage now, but I just left it. But uh, it was really bad, worse than ever. So I cleaned it up and there was a red velvet cake cup and mm. and I was like, oh, that's nice. We'll probably be given red velvet cake then because mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, nice you to have a little variety. And we only got one yeah. given to us. Yeah. The, the last time the woman said, do you want two? And I, I was like, oh, I'll wait for these ladies. You know, I didn't want to take if they wanted. Yeah. So then we got one. Line, yeah. But that's okay because I just need a taste and then... That's good enough. Sometimes that's uh, all uh, that's really necessary. Sometimes that maybe that's all that's advisable. Well, yeah, because what with the um, cheese and cream and that, and then this, you'll be going over 